This is Nick Douglas for the Musto Daily Show. I have with me Hugh Brayshaw. As you can see, he's at a little bit more height challenged than me. I'm going to go with height challenged. <laughs> right. I think like I'm a little bit just, you know, better than that. <laughs> exactly. But how is your head up there? We're in the elements here at Cows Week and there was a cocktail party last night at the Royal Yacht Squadron. I noticed you were wearing your Musto shirt. I sure was, yeah, trying to influence the people at, uh, at the Royal Yacht Squadron for sure. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. It was great to see him there. Today is the official charity for Cows Week. It is the 1851 Trust. I was really lucky to talk to Ben, who's the CEO. You can see that on the Cows Week live show this morning or also listen in to the interview on Cows Week radio. That should be fantastic. I mean, what, what do you think a charity day is about, Hugh? I think it's a time, you know, to give back to uh, kind of a lot of people that, you know, may not be here for the racing, but, you know, they want to be, be involved in Cows Week and Sailing, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And, and for those who may not have tuned in to our live show before, because we haven't actually had one, this is the inaugural live show. What are we going to be doing every day this week? I don't know. I think it's going to change from <laughs> day to day. We're going to learn what we need to do. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Today is going to be very tricky on the water. A very different day to the past few days. Unfortunately, on day one, racing was cancelled for all groups across the course. Great decision by the organising committee. Yesterday, Black Group did get to race. There were a few injuries, but I can report that everybody is safe and sound and and the gentleman with the head injury yesterday is out of hospital. So really great to hear that everybody is safe and well and we'll get on with racing today. I think given that we sort of know that conditions will be a little bit lighter today, we should run through maybe what everybody could be wearing. What do you think? I think that's absolutely a great idea. This, This might look great on the water, but this gear is actually exceptionally technical and it might need to be a bit versatile today, Hugh. Yeah, exactly. I think with these conditions, Nick, uh, we're going to go a little bit more techie on this side. Uh, I'm going to start off with, uh, with the shorts that this, uh, this nice fellow is wearing. You're going to have a bit of reinforcement, I think, for the, for the decks of the boats, uh, absolutely, and you know all the pockets you ever need. Um, so the, these shorts are absolutely fantastic. And then uh, I think actually jacket-wise, I think we've, gone, uh, we've, we've dressed this fella up with the, the MPX jacket. Um, the race jacket, which I think is fan- fantastic, obviously like extremely waterproof, but I think mostly um, that we all know it's uh, amazingly breathable. Yeah. Um, and you know, if you're going to be like rushing around on the boat quite a lot, you want to have something that's going to, you know, really breathe. Um, but also, yeah, versatile in that you can you layer up with this sort of thing. If you're if you're kind of you know at the back of the boat, maybe you're not doing as active um, as as people on the bow, then maybe yeah, you put some jumpers on underneath sort of thing. So it's fantastic range. Or yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely, put one of those on underneath. Yeah. No, it's- um, yeah. Absolutely, and and then if you're running to the bar afterwards, you can just unzip. Oh yeah, and it's, yeah, and still look cool, and you're ready. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, people should get their their Cows Week oh, yeah. official jackets. I mean, jackets and potentially polos as well that oh, we are polos. we are sporting very nicely. Yeah. Have you got yourself a polo? I, I don't have a polo. I, I I don't have a polo. I actually have this event T-shirt, but I noticed that this mannequin has. This mannequin has a white version as well. Is there a white version? Oh, well, yeah, cl- clearly yeah, we can see there's a white version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I love the navy version, though, on you, on you, Hugh. It looks great. Thank you. Yeah, I might get for white tomorrow. I'm not sure. Yeah, you know, mix it up. What I have to say is because it's official charity day as well, make sure you check out the 1851 Trust Handbook. You can donate at the stand. There's also a way to donate in your competitor packs, which is fantastic. And this is all about taking science beyond the textbook. A Sean Roster has done a fantastic job of capturing the elements. So, I mean, hashtag in my element. Awesome. Yeah, so this is perfect example. Um, he's done a fantastic job. Look at that. It's fan- fantastic on the bow. Um, clearly doing something uh, very important, but getting absolutely soaked at the same time. Um, yeah, perfect hashtag in my element. This next one's really interesting, actually. We took, uh, we took this team out on... Um, is that, the, is that the, you? That is, that is myself, <laughs> yeah. I can sail. <laughs> it's proof. Um, but yeah, these girls were out on the XOD yesterday, even though they were abandoned. We went out for a training session and they won the Inside Edge competition. Um, so we went out for a sail and uh, yeah, and got some great shots of that. And that was uh, yeah, getting us used to the elements. So uh, we were definitely hashtag in, my, in our element there. Yeah. Hashtag in my element. Okay, so I'm joined here uh, with Ian Walker, Volvo Ocean Race winner, um, two-time silver Olympic medalist, uh, and now RYA's Director of Racing, and thank you very much for being here. Uh, you came over by the rib this morning, do you see uh, much of the conditions out there today? Well, I think fortunately we got across just before the rain, but um, yeah, well we left from Hamble and there was not a breath on the water, but you could see the smoke coming out the chimney at Forley, um, looked like there's a bit of northwesterly wind sort of up a bit higher, so 
hopefully we'll get a bit of wind to sail with north westerly's not such a bad direction uh, that's good yeah that's really interesting obviously a lot of people getting up this morning won't be uh, won't be seeing that sort of thing um, and then what would your kind of priorities be for a day of racing today uh, on on that sort of assessment well uh it looks quite light so as always you need to know what the tide's doing um and you you can work that out you know from the tide tables i think the tide is low this afternoon so um the tide will be ebbing certainly for the probably majority of the racing um so particularly in the smaller boats then the tide is everything at cows uh, knowing your tide heights, which rocks you can get over, which sandbanks you can clear, what time of day. So a little bit of homework goes a long way for Cow's Week. Um, and then I guess this northwesterly wind, if it, if it wasn't raining, I'd be say watch out for a shift to the southwest, especially if the sun's out. And then the wind, the wind likes to blow down the western Solent and line up with it, sort of 230 kind of direction. Um, but right now I'm stood here and we can hear the rain coming down, so it's probably going to be more about the rain clouds and, and, and seeing the impact that the rain and the clouds are having on the wind. Yeah, exactly. So being like very uh, heads out the boat, looking, uh, looking in the sky maybe a little bit at, uh, at the shifts of that. Yeah, for the, for the wind. But like I say, you know, tide is king. And uh, the great thing about the tide is you know what it's going to do. The wind, you think you might know what it's going to do, but the tide you can plan for. So uh, like I say, especially in the slower boats, you absolutely got to have a handle on the tide. Yeah. And you must have done quite a few Cows Week. Uh, can you remember your very first Cows Week? I can. I, uh, I was thinking about it in the rear batch on the way over. My first Cows Week, I came over and put my name up and offered myself as a crew. I must have been 18 or something. And I ended up sailing with the Metropolitan Police on a Contessa 32. And um, unfortunately, I didn't get arrested that week uh, on a boat called Counterpoise. But I mean, I, I, I used to try and do cows every year. I, I'm, I don't know how many I've done, but I've done a lot. A lot of them early on in small keel boats. Did probably three or four in the Swallow uh, keel boat, which was always great fun. Um, and then I guess the boats got bigger as I got older. Um, and uh, had a very memorable Cows Week on a TP52 um, with a, quite a windy Cows Week. And that was fairly early days. That, yeah. that felt like a huge boat to be sailing around the Solent, just trying not to ram into everybody. <laughs> And that was memorable because because of the big boat, kind of a big step up for you into kind of the bigger boats, was it? Yeah, it was memorable because it was windy. It was memorable because, you know, we were the biggest boat and, you know, those TP-52s are wonderful boats anyway. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think we won. I think we won most of the races, if not all. And, um, yeah, just just had a just had a great time. Oh, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. If you had, obviously, you're a very busy, busy man. Um, if you had the time off and uh, kind of the pick of, of classes right now, what would you what would you kind of head out there and uh, and race in this week? Do you think? I think well, if I hadn't been flying to Japan tomorrow for uh, for to, to join the Olympic team out in Tokyo, well, I, I would have been sailing on um, uh, would have been sailing with an old uh, a bunch of old friends, uh, Oscar Strugstad and Simon Fry and uh, a bunch of mates. I can't even tell you what boat they're sailing. Wouldn't have mattered because it's all about who you sail with. So. You know, just sailing with sailing with your mates. That's definitely what I would have been doing. But if I if I was ignoring that and choosing a boat, you know, personally I like the small keel boats. I, I just think that the rock hopping. Um, I've never done it in an XOD. That's probably the slowest boat. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, I think I, I think the small keel boats are probably the most fun. Yeah, I completely agree. I was out in an XOD with our um, Inside Edge winners yesterday, um, and they're yeah, fantastic. I've not sailed one before either. They're pretty exciting. Did you, did you catch any of the of yesterday's racing or any of the Sail GP um, from uh, yeah, the exciting stuff there? Yeah, we battled our way over in the in the rib, wind against tide, with the family. Um, managed to get here in one piece, and uh, yeah, and then we just walked out to the point. Actually, it was great. It was like it was like. It's like the London Boat Show, you know, meeting everybody you haven't seen for a year and it was, everyone was just chatting on the beach and the sun came out. Um, so, yeah, it was a, a really good fun afternoon. I obviously really disappointed the British, British team pulled out uh, and I was mighty relieved it wasn't, uh, it wasn't Stu Bithell doing the acrobatics and I was, I was very concerned that one of the Dylan or Stu who were going to be racing for us in Tokyo next week, I was pretty relieved that they, they weren't injured really. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was dramatic. Um, you know, it's just a shame the Aussies dominated so much. Would have been good. Would have been good to see a few more boats up there. Yeah, yeah, ex exactly. Yeah, and do you, oh, that's a good point actually. Though, do you, do you look at kind of your your sailors, as it were, and out in other boats, and do you kind of worry about them getting injured and kind of, in, especially in these F50s that are obviously quite fast and dangerous? Um, it is. It is a concern for sure. Um, but you'd have to say, you know, people are more likely to get injured 
off a boat than on a boat. So, um, you know, you can't, you know, you've got to live your life and you've got to, um, you know, a lot, lot, of the, lot of them like to do other sports, which is a great way of keeping fit. And so it's probably just as much risk getting injured going surfing or mountain biking, road biking, as there is as there is going sailing in a, in a moth or an F50 or something like that. So, they, you know, they're young, they're athletic, they've got to stay fit. You, you, you know, you just got to try and use a bit of common sense. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, interesting. Um, and then this kind of, the F50 is, is fast and, obviously, and, and Dylan's kind of clearly on the edge of control. Have you, have you been in that sort of situation? Um, I think a lot, of, a lot of people at Cows Week would not be, you know, in the Southern Ocean riding down these waves, sort of steering a big boat. How, how does that feel with, with um, being on kind of in a lot of, in the powerful kind of those conditions and on the helm? Uh, you can be you can be on the edge of controlling cows. Trust True. me, I've been many times before. There was that great picture all those y- years back of the um, I can't remember the name of the boat. Now was it Hawk? No, I remember anyway, doing a ba- massive uh, pitch pole right in the middle a great, of the Solent. Great so, of it. Yeah. so um, you don't have to be in the Southern Ocean. And I, I mean, I think the big thing is is knowing whether you've got options. So as long as you feel you've got an out, like you can bear away and everything will calm down, or you can head up and everything and calm down. The, the, it gets scary when you don't have any options and you're locked in. Um, I do remember one of my first nights in the Southern Ocean um, on Green Dragon. Uh, it was really windy and I came up on deck. It had been blowing hard. Uh, I was skipper and I went, you know, you have to slow the boat down for people to walk to the back of the boat because there's so much water over the deck. So you sort of slow it down. Everyone you get to the back of the boat and you harness yourself onto the back of the boat. And I was there and I was looking at it going, oh, my God, like, <laughs> how are we going to do this? And, and then when it was my turn to helm, I was I was terrified. I was like, oh, my God, you know, I don't want to broach. I don't want to wipe out this way, that way. Uh, my heart was racing. Uh, it was dark. And um, yeah, so but I couldn't not step up. I was the skipper of the boat. Um, so yeah i just took a few deep breaths and stepped up and took it easy for a while and then slowly wound it up and then before too long it kind of feels normal but yeah so i guess the answer is yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's yeah and, and do you feel when someone else is kind of stepping up to the to the helm do you feel a bit nervous when you're not in control of kind of the of what could go, what could happen <laughs> uh it depends who it is <laughs> Um, you you know you have more you have more trust in some people than others and that's because some people like to sail closer to the edge and that also often makes them faster so trying to balance how hard you push and how fast you go against the potential risk Uh, it's kind of interesting on the on the Volvo boat when I was sat down below in the nav station I could generally tell who was steering by the motion of the boat Um, you could tell you know the contrast was that great that's really interesting actually yeah that and I think you know when things are wrong and, and when, they're, when they're kind of out of control a bit when you're down below, if you've been on the boat for a long time, I guess. Yeah, and you can sometimes hear from the expletives on deck. Um, yeah, I think the, the biggest wipeout we ever had was when a really good mate, Knocker, was steering and uh, about two seconds before we Chinese jibed, um, I, heard that I heard him effectively lose control. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. And, and yeah, in the kind of sense of losing control, have you been in that situation where... Um, where you have felt completely at the mercy of, of the elements and you've kind of gone, all right, I, I, I'm out of control here. And, um, and, and how have you dealt with that? Um, well, you, you know, you've got to try not to let it get to that point. Um, like I say, most situations you have an out, as, you know, you have an option. Um, and when you're away from land, that's generally the case. Um, I remember in the first race when we broke our boom, we had a problem reefing. And it was a Southern Ocean squall and it's getting windier and windier. And you don't know how windy it's going to get. And you're sat there watching the anemometer and it's 30 and then it's 40 and then it touches 50 knots. And you're just thinking, oh, my God, what are we? It then gets to the point where it's too windy to actually take the sails down because it's too dangerous to be on the foredeck. And at that point, you don't have an out. And so you're just praying for the rain to pass through and the wind to drop. So in that situation it but it's all about not getting in that position it's about seeing that about to happen reducing sail before it gets to you because if it's already get to you it's too late so i think that's one of the things that you learn is is thinking ahead as i'm sure you know from your own experiences short-handed sailing you've got to not let it get to that point once it's at that point you're at the mercy the only thing i would say is when you do eventually wipe out and you're lying on your side it's generally not too bad it kind of 
you know, the sails aren't up in the air anymore. They're sort of close to the water and it all goes a bit quiet. And generally you've got a bit more time than you think. So yeah. take your time and make sure you do the next step right. Yeah. So maybe a tip to, to people at Cowswick, maybe they should be, uh, <laughs> when they are flat out, they shouldn't be worrying too much because well, that's kind of yeah. a safe place they, to be. I don't think they'll be lying on their side today. <laughs> not unless they're on a sandbank. <laughs> yeah, let's hope that doesn't happen. Um, and, uh, and on that... Okay, sorry. sorry. <laughs> Have a great day. Cheers, thanks. Thank you. Um, uh, with, uh, so uh, the Musto are launching um, campaign uh, hashtag in my element. Um, uh, and, and with that, kind of the, the premise is that you can't control the elements, but you can, but you can master them. Uh, we went through a few tips there on, um, on kind of having an out. So has got any other, other tips to kind of for people to, to master the elements, whether it being very windy or, or even very, very light? Well, I mean, I guess it's preparation, isn't it? It's, it's about... It's about what happens before, and then you stay in control. So, in in that regard, it's you know it's what is the preparation, what you're wearing, isn't it? It's having the right kit on. If you if you go on deck at the start of a watch and you don't have the right clothes on, and then the wind picks up, you haven't got time to now go down and sort them out. So whether it's your safety gear, whether it's your waterproofs, whether it's the right base layer, whatever, you've got to be prepared for it. So. Um, so planning ahead, having the right gear, you know, it could be a hat and sun cream on a sunny day, or it could be a Gore-Tex top, you know, in the middle of the night when it's wet on deck. So, um, yeah, sailing is, is, you know, eight tenths of sailing is about preparation. So whether you're preparing your tides for today's racing, whether you're looking at the weather, whether you're sorting out your boat handling maneuvers, optimizing your boat, optimizing your clothing, then you've got to get it sorted. I was thinking maybe hashtag in my office would be, would be a better one for me these days, but, um, but yeah, no, I like that. Hashtag in my elements. <laughs> how, is the, how is the office going, actually? The, obviously a very important job uh, in the OIA. Are you enjoying the new... You've spoke a lot about it being a new challenge. Has it been as challenging as you expected it to be? Uh, well, yeah, there's, there's always challenges. But uh, no, I'm enjoying it. I'm learning, I think the key is I'm learning lots of new things. We've got a really nice bunch of people around me. We've got you know, really high, high targets in, in Tokyo with the Olympic team, uh, which, is a, which is a part of my job. So I, I, I oversee or I'm... Um, uh, uh, you know, responsible for the performance of the Olympic team, although I'm not directly managing them. Um, you know, Mark Robinson's doing that. Um, but, you know, I'm also particularly excited about the youth and junior program and what we can do to try and grow the sport, get more activity, either at events like this at Cows Week or in clubs or events around the country. So, you know, there's, there's a lot to do. It's a really challenging environment right now. The world's changing, people are changing, and it's changing fast. And, and it's exciting trying to respond to that. Yeah, that's really interesting. I think a, a lot of people are very interested in you know, how sailing is going to change, and um, I think uh, I think we all pretty f feel safe that uh, someone like yourself is in that position to um, to make these sorts of decisions. Um, so today is Charity Day, Cow's Week, um, uh, a charity that's very close to you, obviously the John Merrick Sailing Trust. Um, it's helped me out personally uh, uh, from going kind of through toppers at a very young age and um, managing to continue my racing, which is amazing. But can you tell people a bit more about the uh, John Merrick Sailing Trust? Yes, well, I still remember your application uh, coming in. So, uh, so yeah, Johnny Merricks was my sailing partner in 1996 um, in Atlanta at the Olympics, and uh, he sadly passed away in a car accident the following year at the Melges 24 Europeans. So in the wake of that, um, those closest to Johnny, some of whom are still here racing at Cows, uh, just bumped into uh, Simon Fry, one of his closest friends this morning. Um, you know, we set up a charity and we've raised money. We've raised over... Um, over, well, pretty much a million pounds now in the 20, however many years it is, wow. 21, 22 years. And, you know, that money we give out to young, aspiring sailors, not necessarily, you know, champions of the future. They could be people who are just doing sailing for the first time. A lot of money goes to junior projects. So, you know, even yesterday morning I was sorting out some awards for, a, there was, we, we helped buy some boats for a Scottish sailing club for a women on water program, helped buying some boats for a junior program in the Midlands. Um, so, yeah, just trying to help uh, get people on the water and also help some potentially aspiring champions of the future. Uh, yesterday we saw Dylan uh, Fletcher and Stu Bithell out racing on the F50. Both of them got financial awesome, help yeah. from the John Merrick Sailing Trust in the early 2000s, early in their career when they needed to step up and were struggling to do so. Sailing is an expensive sport um, and it's, it's great to be able to help those people who need it. Johnny himself had a lot of support and that's where the idea came from. 
Uh, you know, he wasn't from a wealthy background and he had a lot of support in his early days from a local company and that's what we try to emulate. So, so I never would have thought it has gone on this long. Uh, I'll never forget coming back to, jo uh, to Cows with Johnny in 96 after we won our medals, throwing them around the nightclub here in Cows. <laughs> God knows how we didn't lose them. Uh, so, you know, we had a great time here and, um, and in fact, the John Merrick Sailing Trust was the official charity the following year and really it was on the back of the money that we raised from people sailing in cows that gave us enough money to set up the charity in the first place so really strong affinity with cows uh, really proud of what we're doing with the John Merrick Sailing Trust love meeting people like you who we supported in the past still in the industry it, yeah. still <laughs> racing and uh, and yeah that's why we're over here and yeah, it all gives me a great thrill Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, I didn't know, I didn't realise how, uh, how close Cows Week and, uh, and the Trust were together. Um, 1851 is the trust, uh, the official trust this year. Um, but yeah, fantastic to hear that, that John, uh, John Merricks is still uh, yeah, out there and helping people um, get through into, into sailing. I think it's fantastic. And yeah, with all your work at the RWA, I think it's fantastic. Um, I, think, uh, I think that's, like, yeah, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of very interesting. I've, I've been very interested in that personally. Um, our chat. Thank you very much for coming along. Um, you. Hope your flight to Japan is, uh, is, is smooth and everyone out there has a great time. Test event coming up quite soon. Yeah, so a little bit of Olympic update. It is the test event. So this is the dry run, if you like, for next year's Tokyo 2020 Olympics. So we've got a full team out there. They've, many of them have been training out there for, for up to six weeks. Uh, we just had a world championship win with uh, Hannah and Ailey in the 470 women's uh, last week. So they'll be on a high. Good performance all round in the lasers and the 470 men as well. So we're really stoked, really excited to see what performance. It's a very close correlation normally uh, between how well you do in the test event and how well it goes in Tokyo 2020. So, um, you know, this time next year, the Olympics will be uh, just coming to a close. In fact, I think this is the closing ceremony uh, on this date next year. So um, hopefully all the British sailors will get behind the British team. They're a terrific bunch. They're working really, really hard and hopefully bring back some gold medals.